Hi guys, Jamie here from JB Motion. Today is going to be a nice and quick tutorial and it's called quick compositing because it's basically just a very quick compositing tutorial. Uh, so appropriately named, I guess. Uh, we're going to be taking a tire which is available in Cinema 4D's content browser and then we're going to be going and downloading an image of a road uh, which you can download for free from pixabay.com. Link is in the description below. And we're just going to make the tire look like it's actually in the scene. Um, and we're going to do all this just in just over 10 minutes. So let's get started on this. Here we go. Okay, guys. So first of all, I'm jumping into the content browser to find the tire. Um, that's what I'm going to be using for this quick compositing tutorial. You guys are welcome to use whatever you want. Um, but as I'm going to be getting an image of the road or of a road, it's probably fitting that I use something related to a car. So this is a website that you can get free images from. It's called pixabay.com and it's really cool. So I'm just going to go and type in road and the one that I saw was this one. So this is the one I'm going for and just make sure that I'm not a robot. And let's have a look at this. Okay, so we have that downloaded. It's in my downloads folder. So if we're back into cinema now, and we can create a background object. And now we can apply the image that we just downloaded to this background via a material. So let's create a new material and we'll call that background. And we can also call it sky because we're going to be using it for the background object. And we're going to be using it as, uh, for the sky object uh, to light up our scene as well. So turn off reflectance and color. We're just going to be doing this through the luminance channel. So let's load the image and I have it here, winding road. Say no to that. And now we can apply that to the background object. Okay, so now we have our tire. It's just a matter of moving this camera around, this default camera until we're happy with how this is looking. We just have to make sure that the default camera, or you can create a camera, it doesn't really matter. So if I create a camera, make it active, I just need to make sure that the perspective that we're getting makes this look realistic, makes it look like the tire is really in there. If I deactivate my camera, you can see that the camera is kind of pointing directly at the tire. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much all you have to do. If you want to make your tire bigger, zoom in. Then you got a big, huge tire. If you want to make your tire smaller, zoom out. I'm going to keep my tire at close enough to tire size, I suppose. Maybe a little bit bigger. So I'm happy enough with that. I'm trying to kind of line up this horizon line on my work plane with the actual horizon as well. That kind of helps. Okay, cool. So we have our background object. Now we're going to need a floor. So I'm going to create a plane and I'm going to call it floor. And I want to make sure that the floor is actually at the very base of the tire so that it can be a floor. Uh, so I'm just going to go into my right view here and just bring that down right to the base of the tire. Cool. Let's just drag this yellow circle outward so we can increase the height of this. You could also do it down here. I'm going to increase the width as well using that yellow circle. And just so we don't see the so the edges are pushed out of the shot. And now we need to create a new material. We can just duplicate this background underscore sky material and we can call it floor. Now, we can't just apply this to our floor because it's in the luminance channel. So it's not going to catch any shadows for us because it's going to be bright. And, you know, it's not going to it's like trying to cast a shadow on a bright light. It's not going to happen. So we need to copy this shader, turn off the luminance channel, turn on the color channel and then paste the shader. So then we've just put it pretty much put in the image into the color channel. Now we can apply the floor material to the floor object. And we need to set the uh, projection mode. Click on the material tag and set the projection mode down here to be frontal. 
and we also well let's just render and see what that's looking like okay so it's not looking like anything yet we don't have any lighting in our scene so we're not actually going to see anything on our floor at the moment um, so let's create a sky object to get a bit of lighting in here and we don't want to see it so right click on it go to render tags and go to compositing turn off scene by camera now if we apply our background under source sky material to our sky object and if we go to the render settings turn on global illumination and then let's do a render to picture viewer as a treat on that and see what that's looking like so now you can see <clears throat> Now that we've got a bit of light in our scene, we're actually getting a little shadow and we're actually, you know, seeing the road on the uh, floor, I suppose. Uh, whereas before it was just black. So that's pretty good for now. Um, what else do we need to do? <clears throat> well, we need to replicate this sun. So what better way to replicate a sun than with an actual, well, an actual sun? Uh, the physical sky object and that's going to give us access to uh, parameters such as time and location so we can set the time of day we can change the month with this um, we can even set the actual city as well like the location which is pretty cool but I'm not going to go that far into it I'm just gonna well first of all I don't want to see the physical sky I want to um, copy this compositing tag which has seen by camera turned off I'm going to hold down control and just drag that up so now we're no longer just going to be we're only going to be able to see our background object not our physical sky but we can see that we have the sun here right so we don't want the sun to be over there pointing down like where this green line has shown us how it's pointing so it's going to be cast in shadows in that direction we want it to be over here where the actual sun is so we can first of all we can make the time a bit later in the day first of all to get the sun to be a bit lower down to the ground maybe not that low maybe we'll try four o'clock and see what that looks like and we also need to rotate this as well so that the sun is going to be over here where the actual sun is so go into the coordinates tab and let's just rotate this around something like that could work we'll find out once we do a render to picture viewer and see what it looks like okay so that's not working at all the shadow's actually going uh in completely the wrong direction <clears throat> so it looks like we have the sun if i just go into my top view here you can see that the sun is actually over here um, I thought it was over here, but I was just looking at it wrong. So let's bring it so it's actually over there where it should be. Because remember, this is our camera and the sun is kind of somewhere over here, we'll say. So if we have our sun positioned here, it's going to be cast in shadows in this direction. So let's see what that looks like. Actually, not yet. We can refine that even more. And then render to picture viewer on that so right now i have this set to about 280 degrees and shadow wise it's looking pretty good we could do it making the the day uh setting the time of day to be maybe five o'clock so we're going to get a longer shadow because right now we're we could use the shadow being cast by this uh road fence and it's quite long so we can increase the time of day to lengthen this shadow also, you're going to see that there's this big, huge, ugly line and that this plane, this floor isn't actually blended in with our background at all. So to fix that, just go to your, uh, where is it? Floor, I believe it's floor. Yeah, go to the floor object, right click and go to render tags and grab a compositing tag. Just turn on compositing background. Now you're going to see we're going to get some nice blending where that line once was. So that's the old and this is the new. So let's fix the sun, physical sky, time and location set to five o'clock. And let's see what that looks like. So that should lengthen up our shadow. Yeah, okay, so that's looking pretty good. Direction wise, it's not perfect. So we're gonna have to rotate this again. Something like that maybe. 
And I think that might have done it for us. While that's rendering, we can also, well, it's not taking that long, so. Yeah, I mean, it could be longer. I mean, it could be longer. It should be longer. So we're gonna have to set the time of day to six. Maybe, maybe not six, maybe half five. And hopefully that's gonna fix it for us. Yeah, that's spot on. And one more tweak to the rotation of this and then we should be good to go. I also want to, in my physical sky, in the sun tab, I think I might want to bring down the density of this shadow ever so slightly, maybe down to 80%. And we can use our interactive render region as well so we don't have to keep rendering the whole, uh, the whole frame every time and bring up the quality of that. Yeah, okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that shadow. So I'm gonna do one last render to picture viewer on this and just to see what it's looking like overall. Okay, so we need to obviously uh, set up our anti-aliasing settings because you can see all these nasty looking, you know, these kind of green kind of pixel squares that we're getting on the shiny part of our wheel. So quick fix for that is into your render settings and anti-alias and set that to best one by one, four by four. And that should, well, that definitely will make this look a lot better. That's the old and the new is obviously going to take a lot, a little bit longer to render. Old, new, old, new, looks way better. We could turn on ambient occlusion as well to get some contact shadows between our floor and the tire as well so we'll do that and we're at 10 seconds render time now so that will go up a little bit as well as we just turned on uh, ambient occlusion okay old new old new okay cool so I'm happy with that um, so that's it guys I mean that's as easy and as quick as it is to get something into any image and make it look like it's actually in the image um, we could even replace this tire. We could just go put in anything like a sink. So let's grab this sink and <clears throat> we can turn off the visibility of our tire. We have our sink, make sure it's on the floor, bring it down to the floor if it isn't. And we can even just scale it up a bit. So it's like this ridiculously large sink in our scene and render it out. And it's just gonna look like there's a sink in the middle of the road as well. So, so that's as easy as it gets guys. And um, as quick as it gets, I suppose. I don't know how long we're recording for, but uh, yeah, that's it. Hope you learned a lot guys. If you did, please do hit the like button. And if you haven't already, uh, subscribe as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.